And um, if I'm not mistaken, the latest statistic I read was that uh, the Assemblies of God uh, budget for missions is $23 million. <laughs> wow. And $23 million. And um, um, it it is the second largest only to the Southern Baptist Convention. So the Assemblies of God is the second largest Protestant denomination uh, in the United States. So they budget $23 million for uh, missions. Now that's for, that's the national budget. Then each, uh, each district also has a missions budget for, um, for missions in that district. For instance, I don't know what the latest statistic is about the Assemblies of God, but I know that a couple of years ago, your the Church of your youth, the Church of God, they were uh, they their the statistic was they were planning one new parish every single solitary day of the year. So three hundred and sixty five new churches congregations. Uh, were were being started by the Church of God uh, as of a couple years ago. I, I don't know whether that statistic has increased. It wouldn't surprise me if it has. Um, but uh, the Assemblies of God and all the different Pentecostal evangelical denominations, uh, missions is usually one of the largest line item uh, uh, line item. Uh, on on their on their budget, it's one of the largest, and um, so uh, and of course the reason why is because the evangelicals and I'll put the Pentecostals and Charismatics together, sort of the evangelical is kind of an over uh, umbrella um, uh, word to use. Um, missions and evangelism is the single most important um, thing in the life of these uh, denominations, in the life of these churches. And it shows by the fact that uh, they are so active in starting new uh, new churches, new parishes, as well as uh, programs, um, for instance, the Assemblies of God, they'll, they'll buy, they'll buy um, uh, billboard space in which they will spend millions of dollars. Uh, but, um, evangelism is, I would say that evangelism is probably the number one priority of the Assemblies of God, and the second would be uh, discipleship. Um, for, you know, uh, causing those who do come to Christ uh, and, be a, and to come and be a part of their communities, uh, train them, teach them the faith, uh, and then send them right out again as evangelists. So um, that's sort of that's sort of how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, every single solitary person who is a member of an Assembly of God congregation, while they might not actually be doing it, there is an expectation that every single solitary person who claims to be a Christian, um, it is their job to share that gospel. Uh, that faith with everyone that they come in contact with, family, friends, co-workers, strangers, neighbors. Um, that That is, that's what makes them tick. And so that's why, and they're very successful. As I said, you know, Church of God's building a brand new congregation every day. Uh, I'm sure the Assemblies of God, um, you know, and of course the Assemblies of God and the Church of God are not just uh american uh denominations they're they're global denominations uh so i mean we could talk about what the assemblies of god is doing as far as global missions work is concerned also uh, but you know and then of course it also helps when the people of these denominations it's just considered a it's what you do you tithe you give 10 percent of your income uh, to the church for its work. So when you have these numbers of people who are committed and willing to put their money where their mouth is, uh, there are results. There are results. Any so, idea 
uh, how much we spend on missions in the United States uh, total? I don't. I don't. I don't know what that statistic is. I know that in com- and, and, and and of course there are many more Protestants in America than there are Orthodox. Mm-hmm. However, even if we were to do a uh, an analysis and uh, judge it. Uh, and uh, um, do that analysis based on uh, the number of members uh, that we have uh, is statistically and, and percentage-wise to the members that, say, the Southern Baptist Convention has, I'm sure that we're not even anywhere in the ballpark as far as the per capita spending or uh, of membership compared to spending on evangelism and missions. Uh, I just... Mm-hmm. I just know that off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, right, Father, because uh, really the, the statistics that you're quoting, not only are those publicly available, but those denominations are proud of those numbers. Absolutely. But trying, but trying, Absolutely. trying to get those numbers from an Orthodox perspective is very difficult. Orthodoxy is only for uh, certain ethnic groups. But like you said, the Holy Spirit is drawing many, many people to the Orthodox Church who are not from any of those ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it is causing a challenge. It's causing a challenge because the uh, paradigm uh, which the Orthodox Church has functioned under for for so long here in North America, uh, that paradigm, it, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, it, it's a paradigm that is way past and gone, and but there are still people, not just among the lay people, but even among the leadership of the different jurisdictions, uh, this idea, you know, that it's still just for a certain ethnic group. And that's problematic, because what ends up happening is uh, Christ's command to evangelize is not being obeyed. It's just not being obeyed, and it's certainly not seen as a priority, as it should be, among many of our parishes and among our uh, the different jurisdictions. So with Share the Faith, then, we focus on a pan-Orthodox basis of funding local mission parishes. Now, I wanted to, to get your opinion on that approach. Now, we also offer education for the local parishes because— Quite frankly, no one's born knowing how to effectively evangelize. But our, our really our biggest focus really is on funding those local parishes because we want to get close to the people and we want to open up missions. What do you think of that approach, Father? Well, um, you know, in in the uh, the assemblies of God or some of these other uh, um, Pentecostal groups. You know, the idea is, is that you just go into an area, into a neighborhood, and you you begin to share the gospel with people. And as they respond, hopefully positively, uh, then you just gather that group of people together and you start a church. You know, starting a church in a evangelical denomination is much easier <laughs> than starting a uh, uh, starting an Orthodox parish. Much easier. Um well, first of all, there are usually no bishops involved, okay? Uh, you might have a superintendent, but um, he might not even be all that personally involved in the starting of a mission. Uh, it, really, the success of it is with the people, with the local congregation, with, with, with the lay people. And, um, you know, unfortunately, again, this is where... Uh, you know, orthodoxy uh, does not is is not really um, uh, it's not really familiar with this understanding of the lay ministry of evangelization. Okay, uh, you know, um, m- most people in the Orthodox Church have this idea. Oh, there are some people who are specifically called to do that, uh, but that's not my thing. My thing is uh, uh, to. Uh, make sure the coffee is ready for coffee hour on Sunday, which there's nothing wrong with that. I I mean, that is that is an important part of a community to bring the community together. But the fact of the matter remains is, is that um, 
evangelism, the only re the only way it can be effective is if uh, everybody is involved in it, uh, including uh, clergy and laity. But in mm -hmm. reality, the laity are the main engine behind evangelization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a priest, um, yeah, he is out in the community some, and, you know, I mean, the priest's main job is pastoring the the laity okay uh he's taking care he's his his main responsibility is what i would say is discipleship mm -hmm. uh and also pastoral care of of his flock um he is a shepherd okay mm -hmm. uh the shepherd does not give birth to sheep okay the sheep give birth to sheep all right the sheep uh are communicate with each other all right uh, so, it, you know, the priest is, of course, is involved, but uh, we've got to recover this this understanding of everybody in the mm -hmm. parish uh, being one who is sharing the gospel with everybody. But starting an Orthodox parish is, is somewhat difficult. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you we we um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, such things as just like um, an altar gospel. Or a uh, hand blessing cross, or candles, or a censer, uh, incense, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to do, you know, like vespers, you have to have a censer. You don't have to have a gospel book, but you should have a censer or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But those complicate matters because those items can be expensive. They're not easily transported. Okay. And so... Um, uh, you know, it's it's difficult to start an Orthodox parish, but I think that our paradigm in that way also even has to change, and is the fact that we we gather people together and first of all uh, preach the gospel, and then uh, uh, teach them about what it means to be an Orthodox Christian. That all takes time, and that all takes effort, and uh, that's how that's how a uh, community starts. Mm -hmm. um, so um, for Orthodox, we have got to, we, I think there's a lot we can learn from evangelicals as far as uh, how to do evangelism and to do mission work. Um, I, I have uh, been uh, the, um, I did start one Orthodox mission in Little Rock, Arkansas. And fortunately, there was already a, 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 a small group of maybe about 10 people who uh, probably uh, eight of those 10 people were converts. The other two were uh, had grown up in the church. Um, but we just started a meeting together and we started celebrating the liturgy mm -hmm. and people just started sharing around. And before you know it, uh, we had a mission parish in Little Rock that is no longer a mission parish. It's an established parish in the Antiochian Archdiocese. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's... Uh, it seems that this works best in uh, the Midwest, the South, and the West. Uh, the Northeast, it's it's much more difficult. 